this century about, about the bloodshed and the, and the, the madness of this century. And I wondered how, um, how that was you talking about uh, secularism versus uh, non-secularism versus spirituality or, or uh, public really, yeah, really, nature. Uh, sure. Um, but uh, how would you apply that in the, uh, in, the, in the dichotomy between exclusivism and pluralism and in the way that it seems that exclusivism, I'm sure you know what I'm going to say, um, all three of, of uh, Islam and Judaism and Christianity, people uh, uh, purporting to be acting in the names of those religions uh, have shed so much blood yeah. in, uh, in mm. the past. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I think it's um, what we see so often are the horrors of that exact problem. And um, I think with the exception of um, the Buddhist philosophy, uh, technically, although Buddhism was used a lot even in the Vietnam War, there were many Buddhist monks who were involved in all kinds of uh, issues that took place, and Buddhism would today admit that it has seen many other issues that it has faced. Some uh, countries are facing in the, in the Buddhist country, which is technically ethical, where there are the high, such high rates of prostitution that in some so-called Buddhist lands there's more income from prostitution than the entire national budget. So all of these things can happen in every religious worldview. And Hinduism, um, uh, Islam, and Christianity have particularly had a history of all kinds of um, uh, people claiming to be followers in those uh, groups who have killed others and drawn blood and so on. You know, Augustine made a very profound comment once. He said, you never judge a worldview by its abuse. You never judge a worldview by its abuse. You always have to judge it by the essential teaching and life of the founder. Think of that statement very carefully. That second half of it I put in there, Augustine said you don't judge it by its abuse. So I'm saying you always judge it by the character and the teaching of the person who's at the core of that religion or that worldview. It is so fascinating that if you walk into Mahatma Gandhi's home in Ahmedabad in central India today, you'll see a huge banner. It is absolutely stunning when you see it. It's a quote by Bertrand Russell. It is doubtful that the Mahatma's efforts would have succeeded, except he was appealing to the conscience of a Christianized people. So those are the words about a, from an atheist referring to a pantheist who appealed to a theist. <laughs> Fascinating. So don't judge Chris Christendom's history as dark. And it is not just warfare. It is the way sometimes the church at large has used people prior to, uh, you know, in the medieval times, you just see the way we, uh, the church was selling forgiveness, selling salvation. It's tragic. But be sure, anytime you see something genuine, someone is going to come and find something that looks like it but is actually spurious. And so the moment religious leadership becomes politicized or ideologically driven or power driven, you will find people, especially the most common person, exploited in the process. So what I have to say to you is, take a look at the person of Jesus Christ, his life, his character, the way he was. Pilate said, I don't find any fault in this man. The thief on the cross says, this one has done nothing amiss. Jesus looked at his audience and says, which of you convinces me of any sin? When I was writing the book, The Lotus on the Cross, I lived uh, with uh, Buddhist monks and priests for many days. I'd go in in the afternoon, stay there, and uh, after they'd finished their rounds and talked to them for hours, got to know many of them in Malaysia and Thailand and so on. And what I'm telling you is the truth. On several occasions, several of them would say to me that they've never doubted that the most perfect life ever lived was that of Jesus Christ. And so, where Christendom veers from him, you not only get killing and all of that, you get abuse of people as well. Where you follow him with who he was and what he says, it is an antidote to what you have raised. So don't judge a system by its abuse. Anytime religion becomes driven by power and ownership, violence will ensue. And that's what we are seeing in our world today.